everyone, Pot ISM. Welcome to part three of our Tamiya 132 F51 Mustang video build. There's been breaks between these builds. I understand people are eager to see it because a lot of people are asking to do it. But as I said, I think it was in my last bench update. I'm going to pick at this as and when I'm interested because if I don't, I'm going to lose interest. And currently, I am eager to build it. So. I'm going to pick at it as and when I feel like it in between other builds. So there may be big gaps between the parts. Today, we're going to start off where we kind of left off last time. I don't know if I mentioned it in the last video. I made a bit of a boo-boo. I used the wrong supercharger parts from the kit. So when I went to screw some of the parts together, like I explained in a bit, they wouldn't fit. So I had to order some new parts. Restart again the supercharger. So I rebuilt it all off camera. Same way we did it on camera, and this is where we're starting off today. So this is a continuation of part two, really. But the goal today is to get everything um, in the fuselage and the flu fuselage glued together. Now, it's not necessarily the progress I'd like to make in the build, as I'll explain in a minute. Um, but I thought it was quite important steps to show, so I thought I'll show in a little bit more depth. Because it is quite fiddly and some of it is confusing. And if you're not careful, you'll forget things as you'll see as well. So let's jump in and let's uh, start off where we left off in part two. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, let's jump back in where we left off last time. So we had a bit of a calamity last time. We broke a couple of parts. We put the wrong part in place. I had to order new parts, hence the delay in getting this. But we're here. We're back to where we left off with all the correct parts on the carburetor. So pay attention to the instructions because I used the wrong parts. So it basically wouldn't fit together when I went to screw the engine to the bulkhead. So pay attention to the instructions. So we're back. Uh, we've got a few parts just to detail paint. Uh, these just need detail paint in silver. So rather than mask them, I thought we'll brush paint them. Some Vallejo Model Air Silver. Windsor Newton Fine Detail Brush. Bit of careful ma uh, painting. And we're good to go. And then once dried, they are just CA glued in place next to each other like so. And then of course our engine fits onto the supercharger housing via the poly cap inside we can then screw this in this is where the problem was last time i put the wrong part on the back of that supercharger housing and it wouldn't screw in and it would have put everything off and all the panels would have fitted so i basically had to rebuild the supercharger but there we go correct parts in place uh, screwed in place now as it should be so we're all good now there so we can move on and today's goal as i already said is to get this thing all closed up in the fuselage and get the fuselage glued together so a couple of instructions to see where we're at I'm trying to remind myself where we've gotten to and what we're doing still quick test fit putting these parts on because these are going to be ca glued in place so no going back from this so the part you're worried about even slightly just test fit them Make sure front lines up. This is very important on the front of this aircraft. With the removable panels, you need to make sure that all this front end is properly lined up. So just tighten that screw just a little bit. We've got some Loctite CA glue. And we're going to put a couple of generous dabs on each of these locating points. It even stresses in the instructions to make sure this is glued securely. And make sure these are lined up. Put the top one in first. Then the bottom, so as a top one, struggles to click in place. And if you're even remotely in doubt, take it back off and do it again. But there we go. I've checked, double checked. And it was all straight, as it should be, and all pushed fully home. So that shouldn't give us any issues now. So that's basically our cockpit done. Bar a few little detail 
pieces. So I should have done these red switches and that when I had the instrument panel off, but I totally forgot. Uh, I think it was the excitement of getting it all together. So we've got a few switches to detail paint. Now whether these are right or wrong, I don't know. This is not the box build. We're following the time instructions uh, to, to a point. Um, if I go too far in depth with this, with research and everything, and scratch build and everything, I'll lose interest in this. And at the minute, I'm just keeping the interest in the build. And I hope we can get through this. So we're going to follow the instructions to as much of the letter as we can. So if any of the, the buttons are wrong, if I've done anything wrong, you just got to bear with me. I'm doing this to try and get a bit of mojo back for the aircraft. And if we can get through this build, I think we can do others. And if we can get through a Tamiya 30 second scale kit, I'm pretty sure we can build pretty much anything. So just detail painting red on some of the switches and the knobs and what have you. Following the call out on the instructions, we've got some Tamiya LP, I think it'll be 21 red on a cocktail stick. Just using that to detail paint the buttons and a few switches that are on the uh, instrument panel. And then we've got the button on top of the control stick as well. And there we go, that's a little bit of colour in the cockpit. And then there's a couple of handles on the side and some levers and what have you. And again, we'll just bit detail paint them up. Now, if you're going to paint with lacquer paints like this, load the brush up. I don't mean load the paint on, but you want to go over the paint as little as possible. Apologies about the camera. It's a pain, this thing. Sometimes it'll focus close, sometimes it won't. I need a new camera. Um, it's something we're going to have to sort out in the foreseeable future. Dropping the camera has broken my autofocus when it zoomed in, so it doesn't like it at all. As you can see, blurry, nice and focused on my hands. And uh, the touchscreen focus doesn't work anymore either. It's very intermittent. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just detail painting the handles and the switches and what have you on the sidewalls. And it's adding a little bit of colour to the cockpit. Yes, I know that tail is very close, precarious, that bottle lid. Um, it's actually nowhere near it, to be honest. It's just hovering over the top. But it'll be fine. Trust me. I'm a modeller. So there we go. It's not a bit of detail. Like I say, this is wrong. So be it. It's one of those. I'm following the instructions. That's probably going to be the uh, key to this build out the box. Bar a few little bits. But we're just adding a splash of colour inside. And it does make all the difference. It livens it up a little bit. Otherwise it would be very drab and dreary. Now we've got some other parts to clean up and sort out. So it's back to the oblig obligatory. Clean up, sand, polish, glue together, add the PE, so on and so forth. So lots of fiddly bits to sort out. But we will get there. So this is the radiator and oil cooler duct, I believe. So there's several components to cut off, so we're just going to cut them off, clean them off using the old 400 UMP thinny stick, the buffer and polisher and some sponges where required. Pick your sanders um, wisely, basically. If it's got curved edges, use a sponge. If it's straight, use a thinny stick or a customizable sander. And you can't beat our ultimate sanders at all. We've got some PE now. So this is steel PE, quite thick as well so it's pretty forgiving uh, as opposed to brass or some of the softer stuff so we've got a Zuron PE pliers there we've got some CA glue and uh, we've got several pieces to do we've got quite a lot of fiddly bits to do today which is why I kind of kept this short because I wanted to show a lot of it going in because if you've not done it before it can be a bit confusing these are quite in-depth kits and while everything seems to fit together well You've got to pay attention to the instructions, as we've found out already with the uh, supercharger. And you've got to pay attention to where all these detail parts go. So I thought I'd show this in a little bit more depth. It may not be the progress you were hoping. But at the end of this video, we're going to get all the fuselage closed up. And let that glue dry. And then when we come back next time, we can um, de-seam it and really crack on with the build. I think after today, a lot of the fiddly stuff is done. Um, but the really fiddly stuff and hopefully we can get a bit of momentum on the build so all the parts cleaned up with some PE cut off we've got several pieces to apply so follow the instructions line are all up well we're using the Loctite thicker CA glue so it gives us a little bit of working time so line up get it in place now this is concave so we need to it tells you to pre-bend the PE but I knew on this one I could just get it in place 
line it up, then grab the tweezers, squeeze it in, give it a second or two for the shea glue to grab it. While waiting for that to dry, we'll just grab a cotton bud and wipe off any excess glue. Try and keep it as neat as we possibly can. If you do get a little bit of excess glue, a little bit of acetone on a cotton bud and just gently rub the PE. Not the plastic, because it'll melt plastic. Just gently rub the PE and it will take off any CA glue that you've got on there that you don't want on there. Just be careful, like I say, don't get it on the plastic because it will absolutely melt and destroy plastic. So take your time and be careful. A little bit of PE on the underneath of this little duct as well. A little tiny square that we're going to drop about 12 times. Are you ready? One. Two. Three. Three times. That was as many as I thought. You always remember things differently. Again, sorry about the blurriness. We will have to get this sorted. Um, it's a case of either not zooming in or <laughs> being a bit blurry. It's one of those. So we've got a little bit of a steel rod now that goes through like a, a PE hole in this little section. This is the stop for the vent, how far it opens. Uh, it's probably got a proper name, but I haven't got a clue what it is. But it's just like a, a PE stop. So we need to glue the rod into the bottom while keeping the piece through the top. It's a bit fiddly to do, as you can see. Keep dropping things over and over again. The very fiddly part. So we need to put it through the hole. Then line it up. This little slot in the bottom, you can see it just there. We line it up, get everything lined up where it should be. And push it home. And there we go. And again, any excess CA glue, we can just wipe away quickly with a cotton bud. Pointed cotton buds from Tamiya are very, very helpful. And then again, a bit of CA glue underneath. And we can get the larger part in place as well. Line everything up. Push it down. Like I say, these are fiddly parts. We've got a few other fiddly parts to do later on. For some of the movable parts on the ailerons, uh, ailerons and the rudder and what have you. But it's not too bad to do. And we really start to see progress soon because we're starting to get some of the major components on. This little part now slots into here, the piece we just made. And it kind of free holds itself on two little pins at the back. And then the PE part just slots through the top and hooks over. Like so, the instructions are quite confusing as to how this works. But I just left it and thought, okay, let's see how it goes. A little bit of glue and a magnet in place here. Loads of magnets on this kit. So be aware there's three different sizes and two of them are very, very close to each other. So just bear that in mind. Again, follow the instructions. Read, double read, double check. If you're not even remotely sure, have a good look and just make sure... You are using the right parts, the right PE, the right magnets before you commit to glue. So this part's going on top now. So a couple of dabs of Tamiya Extra Thin. Get it all in place and lined up. Then we can glue around the edges properly. And then there's a nut. It's underneath, sits underneath the actual housing itself. Like so. And then we pop this part in we just built on top and that holds the nut in place. Now at the top of my head, the nut is for the stand, if I remember right. If you're doing it in flight. So once you've got all this lined up, make sure, again, it all sits in the right position. Nothing's fouling, nothing's pushing it up. And then we can go around with the extra thin and uh, get it all lined up and centred, glued in place. This is my Tamiya Extra Thin and uh, EMA Plasti Weld Mix. 
So the reason I mix it is because it get you get a hotter glue with the EMA Plasti Weld, but the time extra thin slows down its evaporation drying time. So while you get a hotter glue, it doesn't just evaporate off. If you use mech before or anything like that, you'll put it on before you know it's gone. It dries that quick. And while that can be beneficial sometimes, it can be detrimental as well. So it was a tip I got off a friend of mine. And uh, yeah, it works really well. Here we go, another piece of P in place. More plastic cleaning up now. To do, this is the, um, I think this is the magnetic housing for the rear landing gear because there's two <coughs> magnetically held landing gear options on the back so this is the section at the top that holds them in it's very clever we'll see it later on in the build but there's two magnets that live in here and again the fiddly to do these rare earth magnets are crazy powerful and trying to get them in place you can't use tweezers because they stick to the tweezers and they also like to stick to themselves so they can be a little bit fiddly, so a little dab of CA glue, and as you can see, it's stuck to itself. Stuck to the tweezers, and stuck to itself again. There you go, and again. So best thing is, use your tweezers, line it up, push it in, use your finger, and let the CA glue grab it, and then make sure they're pushed home. Plastic part sits over the top, like so. So again, quick bit of Tammy Extra Thin Mix. We can glue these in parts. So yeah, there's two sections for the back. One with the tail gear down and one with it up. So it's literally two removable sections. It's very, very clever. Um, and this is the magnetic housing that holds that in. So, quick word from our sponsor. I'm myself and Leah Ultimate. Head on over to www.umpretail.com and help support mine and Lee's business because without alternate modeling products, there would not be any international scale modeler and all the videos we put out there and the Facebook page and the forum we run. We stock loads and loads of modeling products, including all our own products of our Apex Airbrush, our pigments, primers, sanders, thinner and cleaner tools, our wonderful storage system, polish system, and weathering washes. We also sell modeling tools, paints, model kits, glues, solutions, fillers, weathering products, aftermarket, and of course, international scale modeler merchandise and gift cards. And all orders made before 12 midday get next day delivery in the UK, and international orders are shipped within 48 hours. Right then, so we've got several magnets to put on the fuselage as well. So again, refer to instructions, make sure you've got the correct ones, a little dab of CA glue, pop it in place. Now, there's one fundamental part I forget to put in here, and it's that poly cap on the tail that holds the uh, elevators in place. And I completely forgot to put it in and didn't notice till I came back about three, years after, three hours after gluing the fuselage together. So we have no poly cap in there. So we're going to have to probably PVA glue them in at the end, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. But it's exactly what you get for not doing what I said. And that is following, paying attention to your instructions. Anyway, with all the magnets in place, we've just gone around and done them. The part we just did that holds the tail gear in, we just put in place and it does grip in there very positively so just a little dab of tiny extra thin mix on each side will hold that in nicely for us we can then pop in our um, radiator oil cooler duct pop it all in place lines up absolutely beautiful again if you're in doubt test fit things Make sure they all fit in place properly. Everything's lined up, and as you can see, it just lines up absolutely perfect. Now is the time to be very careful and make sure everything lines up, because if anything's out here, the fuselage isn't going to close up, the engine bay's not going to close up, the engine covers aren't going to fit, you're going to have a bit of a nightmare. So it's time spent here is well spent. So a couple of dabs of uh, time extra thin just to hold it in place once we're happy that it's all lined up and it looks absolutely perfect now it does call for you to paint these different colors but to be honest it's a bit of a pain because when you spray the aircraft you're uh, you're going to get paint in there anyway so i'll paint it at the end we'll get a brush in there um, or a wash whatever it takes to get in there you're not going to see it that much anyway to be honest 
So yeah, just some generous Tammy Extra Thin now to hold all these in. We're, put, we're gluing painted parts together, so it needs a bit more glue uh, than you usually would. And yeah, just nice careful glue. Don't get on the exterior of the fuselage. Certainly don't make a fingerprint on the fuselage. It's one of the worst things you could do. But just, uh, yeah, be generous. Get enough glue in there to hold things together. Make sure our little flap works as well. So it does only held in by one side at the moment, so just make sure it's all lined up. It opens up great, and with it open, we get a bit of glue in there with our glue in it shut. So like I say, at this stage, double check everything. I got and left out the poly cap because I'm an idiot. <laughs> one of those things, unfortunately. Thankfully, not the end of the world. Just makes things a little bit trickier later on. So the side of the fuselage now, we've got a bracing point to put in the front. I've already checked with the instructions I've got it the right way. So we just pop that in place. Um, in hindsight, you're probably better using say glue to do this, to get it to lock in more positively. And we've also got a little uh, pipe to go in the front as well. So again, refer to instructions, make sure you get it all lined up properly. So once you check you've got it lined up, a couple of dabs of glue. Again, not a fan of using temperature thin on painted parts, but for this, I wanted the movement of being able to move things rather than the, well, once you use CA glue, there's no moving it once it's in, is there? So I just wanted to use this. It was glued just fine. You just got to be careful and obviously don't ruin your hard work of destroying all your painted parts you've already done. So with that in place, we can now line up our cockpit. Quite nerve-wracking now because this is the point of, uh, is it all going to fit? And this is a very large piece. To put in place but typical tamia just absolutely slots in place and for anybody that says these 130 second scale kits from tamia are not worth the money as a never built one in my opinion more than likely has never built one because when you build these and see just how well everything fits together it's mind-blowing it really is and this is what you're paying for the sheer quality of the kit the fit of the parts everything uh, they are very very high quality kits so i see people quite often say oh they're not worth the money they're very expensive you can pick the p51d up um, version of this kit for as low as 80 pounds sometimes from certain places uh, rrp is around about the 100 pound mark and while that's expensive it's a big box of stuff it really is i've reviewed the p51d on the channel a number of years ago Go and have a look what you get in the box. It's a lot. And high quality kit that fits together like this. It is well worth the money. Trust me. It really is. You could pay half the price for a trumpeter kit. It will not go together like this. It will not have all the extras that come with the kit. And the finesse and the quality of parts. Been there. I've built them. Um, I've paid £60 for special hobby kits. that are nowhere near this quality. So for £100 for a kit like this, it's well worth the money. So the, the fuselage takes the copy housing beautifully. As you can see, it looks really, really good in there. So I've just glued a few places underneath. To be honest, once the fuselage is together, it'll hold most of this in anyway. So we don't really need to go mad with the glue. Just enough to make sure we all get it in. Make sure it's all pressed fully home. Again, we want to make sure everything's fitted perfectly. So I'm taking my time, checking everything's in place, making sure nothing's fouled, and then here we go. We can come with our other half to glue this in place as well. And this is nerve-wracking because this is the point of, is it all going to fit together? And are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I'm still waiting. <laughs> there you go. It just literally pushes itself together like so perfectly so you're going to need some clamps not to force it together just some of the parts are a bit springy as you can see it all pushes together absolutely perfect and a lot of it actually pushes together and holds itself but some not that it don't fit like i say it's just springy plastic so it's just going to need a little bit of holding in various places so you're going to have to use a whole myriad of clamps and techniques for holding stuff and you're going to have to play it by piece by piece how you're going to do it. So I'm going to use a combination of my red spring clamps, my metal ones, 
Um, I've got some bulldog clips. We're going to use clothes pegs. And we'll use some tape in places as well. So I'm going to work on a section at a time. I'm not going to try and do it all at once. So this is the hidden spine section here. As you can see, we've got all of our red spring clamps here, just holding it together while we glue it. So we just glue it, give it a little bit of a, a clamp while we do it. And while it's just doing its magic, we just go around and make sure everything else is still lined up perfectly. So we are going to have areas to fill. The kits are good. They're not miracles. So some areas are going to need some filler just by the nature of it. And like I say, you need to pick your clamp wisely because some will hold themselves on. Some will fly out to oblivion, as you'll know if you used these little red clamps before. And just careful gluing. Now, we don't want to be gluing shut anything that should move. We don't want to be gluing shut uh, anything that should open or ruining any of our hard work. So like I say, I'm just picking my clamps, having a look where I need gluing, having a look at the best way of clamping it. So just work your way around. As you see, probably one of these red-handled metal clamps is going to be the better option here, because it's going to grip it better, like so. And then a bulldog clip underneath will clamp the whole lot together. So there we go, we've worked that out, so now we can pop some glue in. Like I say, just be methodical, there's no rush. Take your time, enjoy the kit, and make sure you do everything right. Now, like I say, well, our goal today is to get this closed up, and it's nearly done. So it's not the longest video today, but I, this was my goal on this. This was kind of the goal of part one, which went a little bit awry. And to be honest, we probably had to split it up into two parts anyway. So we're on schedule. We're at where we want it to be. This can now sit and dry fully. We can sand it. We're probably going to have to add some sprue goo or CA glue filler here and there. We'll part at this on the back where the rudder goes. Just you can fill inside the edges just there like so very sparingly with the glue and just a light clamp together there we go and then some clamps clothes pegs are your friend you can pick them up really cheap these red spring clamps are really cheap as well and bulldog clips i'm sure most of us have got these knock around the home if not they can be found really cheap as well and now we're going to do the tail itself. We're doing it upside down, so we don't spill any glue everywhere. Let the capillary action carry it under. And again, be careful you don't touch any of your clamps, because that will capillary action the glue onto the plastic as well. So don't forget, this is my Tamiya EMA Plastic World Mix. It's about 50-50 mix. Uh, it just gives you a hotter glue with a slower glue in time. Once you're happy, just give it a little squeeze. Don't need to go mad. Just enough to get the parts together. And if you want, you put another clamp on. And there we go. If you're getting excess, just wipe it off quickly. And then there you go. Springy clamps. See, told you, if you're not careful, these things will take your eye out. So be very careful with these red ones. They do come with little rubber clamps at the end, but they last about five minutes. So they're a bit of a pain. But they are good little clips. And there we go, just pop it on the back there as well to hold that. And that is it. So while we do need clamps, it's not to force it together like we do with a lot of cheaper kits. It's just to keep the glue parts together and try and minimise the amount of filling we need to do. Same with underneath. We're not being overzealous with the glue. As you can see, when we get it out of the part, we're wiping it off. Just making sure this is all lined up and straight. Give it a squeeze. Like so, and then we'll grab another clothes peg and just pop it on to hold it in place. So we'll leave this as is now for a good couple of days, and then what I'll probably do is um, I'll film a short segment of me sanding all the parts, and then I'll test them to see if they're filled, and if not, we'll put some sprue glue in, and then we'll leave that to dry for a good week. So we'll have a little bit of um, footage that's a week apart on the next video, uh, but it's going to be probably a good week or two before we come back to this because if we do need sprue goo, which I think we will, which is the molten plastic, it's mixed styrene with tet. Uh, if we're using it as a filler, I want to let it dry for a good week at least. Uh, but I won't know if we need it yet until I sand it. So I'll make sure I get the footage of me sanding 
before we commit to the sprue goo and then we can move on and get it in place but again just some nice strategic gluing the little front piece here that bulkhead not bulkhead sorry that cross member again i should have ca glued it because it's going to need a little bit of tape to hold it in place but we can do that in a bit this middle section underneath here is nicely glued now so we can grab our clothes peg and it fits perfectly over look at that made for the job and there we go all clamped in place and then just the top little scene this is probably the most visible seam on the kit and very fiddly to fill because there's a bit of detail either side so just pop it in a bit of glue we're not pressing hard we do want to not alter the shape of this and just put a little bit of pressure on it and then here we go we put a little bit of tape over the front there to hold that in this is about four three four hours later when i come back and realize i've missed the poly cap out like an idiot but we're all glued it all seems to have taken really well there's no gaps everything seems to have lined up well i've test fitted the front cowling underneath to make sure that all fits in place and it does and once we start sanding we'll test fit all the upper and side cowlings as well but there we go that's where we're going to leave it be today okay there we go then objective completed we got it all in the fuselage it's all glued together uh no real issues at all pretty straightforward a little bit fiddly in places i forgot the bloody poly cap for the tail uh for the elevators but hey one of those uh it's not the end of the world a little bit of pva glue in there whatever that'll fix that up. i'm not going to be flying this around the room playing with it all so it's not really an issue um, but happy with the progress we got today as i explained i'm going to probably sand this in a couple of days the seams test them uh, i'll do the old sharpie test we run a sharpie over the seams see if you can see it if it's going to need filling i'm going to use sprue goo i'll catch all this on camera but there'll be a bit of a gap between you seeing it in the next part and the continuation anyway ignore that um and then going to sprue goo it and if i do i'll have to, i want to let it dry for at least a week before we start attacking the seams because I don't want to be overworking these seams or we'll lose um, where the panels fit. Especially the upper section in front of the cockpit. If we profile that too much when we put the engine cowl on, you'll see the divot where it's been sanded. So I don't want to over sand. So if we can get away with filling, brilliant. If we need a little bit of filler, so be it. We can also go the route if it's not perfectly filled, so be it. We'll play that one by ear. Like I say, this is not the box ish build i've added a few bits um if it isn't perfect or isn't as weathered as you hoped or i didn't do this and i didn't super detail that it, it's going to be what it is because this is a build i need to get out of the way for myself because as i said through the video there if we can get through this build i think we can build more of them and i certainly picked one of the most technical kits mainstream kits to build so if i can do this i can do anything and hopefully we can add a bit more uh, aviation subject matter to the channel. So bear with me. Uh, it may not be the fully in-depth build you want to see, fully detailed build. But this is kind of a thing I need to do for myself. And to get to this stage is a big step alone. Because the last time I built this kit, I didn't get much further than where I'm at now. So this is a big step. So the next part will be a biggie. But we've still got loads of fiddly bits to do um but it's real progression now because we'll see the aircraft come together and once we get this painted i think we're good to go that is it then we are off um because that will really give me the drive to get it going so bear with me this big part no waffle i just want to explain where i'm coming from here I'm trying to keep the mojo going trying to keep the interest going so i'm going to pick at it as and when i feel like it my heart lays with cars and that's the way it always will be um and i'm eager to get back to the focus I want to go back to the Games Workshop night, which should be worked on tonight's live show. Um, once we get that to paint, that would be good as well. Anyway, enough waffle. Um, we'll be back with part four of this as soon as I can. Um, so if you are following the bill, thank you very much. I know it's brought a new few people to the channel and probably reignited a bit of interest back in the channel seeing aviation. So bear with me. I am going to get a build. I am determined to get a build just for those of you out there that are thinking... He's not going to finish this. I am determined to do it. So we'll pick it up when we want and hopefully we'll get it done. There we go. As always, if you want to support the channel, my videos, um, you can support me on Patreon. Links in the description down below. There's also a PayPal me 
link as well. There's some perks and benefits for being a patron. Monthly live stream, monthly giveaway, so on and so forth. So if you feel like doing that, it's much appreciated. And thank you to everybody that does. Without that, these videos couldn't continue. So thank you all very much. Uh, check out Intestor Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, where you can get a lot of the products I use in these video builds. Check out my Paul ISM Facebook page for all my personal modeling work, and the Live at the Bench page, and the Off Air Hangout group, and the ISM GB page uh, for all the latest news on all those sections as well. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. If you got this far, hmm, let me know your favorite. Hmm, aircraft car tank whatever genre of modeling you're in let me know your favorite subject out of that genre in the comments down below it's surprising many people don't see these uh and pay attention to the video because it does become apparent when you've not watched the video when you ask me questions that are answered in the video and that's fine we all get distracted but try and answer that question if you get this far because it's always interesting to see and please subscribe to the channel like the video uh, click the bell notification and leave a comment. I do appreciate everyone's comments. There we go. Anyway, I've waffled, so I'm going. So have a good day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.